What do you think is the number one reason why customers return to Sears time after time? Is it trust, selection, price, or maybe location? Granted, those are all important reasons. However, service is the number one reason why customers return to Sears time after time. That's why your ultimate goal should be to make your customers' entire shopping experience hassle-free by giving them outrageous customer service. You can accomplish this by making your customers feel that you've done your very best to take care of them, presenting them with all the products and services that satisfy their needs, and then leaving it up to them to make the buying decision. And that includes offering your customers maintenance agreement coverage and letting them decide for themselves. Well, this training package will show you how to sell maintenance agreements right 100% of the time with 100% of your ability using 100% of the process during the product sale. Hi, I'm Rocky Hendricks, and I've been selling big ticket merchandise now for more than 30 years. And I gotta tell you, I truly enjoy selling. That's why I'm excited to be here today, because I'm going to show you how to sell Sears maintenance agreements during the product sale. This program is divided into two parts. Part one shows you the power of a Sears maintenance agreement. In this part, we'll not only define what a maintenance agreement is, we'll show you all the features and benefits most important to your customers. Part two teaches you the seven steps of selling Sears maintenance agreements during the product sale. Step one underscores how to prepare for a sale, and step two, how to greet your customers and begin building a relationship with them. Step three shows you how to discover what your customers want and need. Step four highlights how to present the Sears maintenance agreement as part of the product sale. Step five demonstrates how to overcome your customers most common objections. Step six illustrates how to close the sale by asking for it. And step seven highlights how to create customers for life. This entire program focuses on how to sell the maintenance agreement during the product sale. And no matter which product you're selling, basically the steps to selling it, including the maintenance agreement, are the same. Do you realize the power of a Sears maintenance agreement? Dear Service, we are diehard maintenance agreement believers. We have all our appliances plus many of our other products covered. Well, about a year ago we moved and our refrigerator was the only major appliance we brought with us. It was perfect timing to take advantage of our annual checkup. After checking out our fridge, the technician also looked at the other major appliances that came with the house and told us that they all qualified for coverage. I covered them all for three years. Well, a little over a year later, the dishwasher started to leak. It was even dripping right into our basement. Luckily, I was covered because it would have cost us nearly $200. Talk about getting our money's worth. Oh, one more thing. When we sold our home, we transferred the coverage on the appliances we left behind to the new owners. It was a great selling benefit. Well, about the same time our dishwasher started leaking, the washer we left behind gave some problems they were ecstatic that they were covered. It just reaffirms my belief in Sears maintenance agreements. Every year we receive a multitude of letters similar to these, extolling the power of a Sears MA. And in order to fully understand the power of a Sears MA, we need to go back to the birth of our company in 1886. From the very beginning, Richard Sears understood that satisfying his customers was paramount to the company's success. His motto was simple, give them the biggest bunch for the dollar. As a consequence, Richard Sears was the first to realize that repair service was essential to customer satisfaction, so he offered a six-year warranty on the watches he sold. In the 50s, Sears continued building on its reputation for trust and honest dealing with our customers by offering the first maintenance agreement coverage ever offered at Sears. Today, we offer maintenance agreements either at the point of sale, via mail, and through our telemarketing centers. We also offer MA coverage on HVAC by our sales reps in the field. 
and we offer both on-site and in-shop coverage. What exactly is a Sears maintenance agreement? It is a contract that obligates Sears to maintain the merchandise with normal usage in proper operating condition for the life of the agreement. Therefore, a Sears maintenance agreement is not an extended warranty. You'll know an extended warranty when you see one because it mostly only covers problems occurring from manufacturer's defects. A Sears MA is not an extended warranty. Just look at the full range of benefits a Sears maintenance agreement offers and you'll realize the power of a Sears MA. An MA covers parts and labor not already covered by the limited warranty needed to help keep products operating properly under normal use. This helps extend the life of some merchandise and helps budget for repair bills. Cosmetic parts for up to three years on brand new products to help keep them looking good. Continued service beyond the normal warranty, which means repairs due to normal use to help keep our customers' products in proper operating condition without additional expense. Repairs are done by a force of more than 14,000 authorized Sears service technicians who have an average of 11 years experience, which means someone our customers can trust will be working on their products. Have you ever seen any of our competitors' vans on the road nationwide? MA coverage includes non-technical calls such as a blown fuse or trip circuit breaker, instructional calls, and even installation problems on qualified products. Try asking one of our competitors for all three and they'll look at you like you're kidding. An MA covers nationwide service, which means Sears can provide service in virtually every city in the U.S. Not one of our competitors offers nationwide service like we do. An MA is transferable to a new owner and remains in effect no matter where in the U.S. the customer moves, which can be a selling benefit. MAs are cancelable, which means the customer can cancel the MA at any time and the unexpired part of the payment will be refunded. Repair expenses are prepaid and budgeted, avoiding unexpected repair bills. There's no deductible, once again avoiding surprise bills. Plus, a Sears MA gives our customers emergency protection, which is provided at no extra cost where health and safety are involved. And the biggest advantage we have is that when our customers are covered under a Sears MA, they will receive a preventive maintenance check at their request for each year of coverage to help keep their products in proper operating condition. Just think about this. With extended warranty coverage, customers have to wait for their products to break down in order to use their extended warranties. With a Sears MA, our customers can avoid that hassle because they have the added peace of mind knowing that Sears will help keep their products in proper operating condition if they take advantage of their PM checks. Can you see that there isn't any extended warranty or really any other coverage out there that can even compare to a Sears MA? With a Sears MA, there are no surprises. And when our customers are covered under an MA, if they ever need to use it, they can simply call Sears Home Central at 1-800-4-MY-HOME 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. How many of our competitors can even come close? And since we maintain our own records, the burden of purchase is not on our customers. Not like most of our competitors who require that their customers present the validated warranty certificate and even the original purchase receipt. Talk about a hassle. And boy, do our customers hate hassles. That's why they totally trust Sears to take care of them, because we take the hassles out. And no one has earned the bond of trust with our customers like our technicians. That's why they love when our customers take advantage of the power of a Sears MA. The best thing about a Sears maintenance agreement, in my opinion, is the customer doesn't have to worry as far as their appliance. That's our job. I am a big believer in maintenance agreements. I own several myself on uh, my own appliances. Even though I am a pretty versatile technician, there's a lot I can repair on my own, it's a good value for me to own a maintenance agreement just for the cost of the parts alone. I feel our customers understand the difference between price and value, that a maintenance agreement enhances the value of a product. People that shop on price alone may be dissatisfied at some future date if their product needs service and they're not covered. A customer covered by a maintenance agreement feels satisfied that they made the right decision because they're not faced with any unexpected repair bills and, and they keep coming back to Sears because they feel like they made the right decision and that's good for everyone. 
And the happiest Sears customers are those who take advantage of the power of a Sears MA. In a recent image survey, our customers told us that the number one reason why they buy from us is because we service what we sell. In another survey, we discovered that MA customers shop at Sears nearly twice as much and spend almost three times as much as customers who don't have an MA. Talk about believing in an MA. So you can see that a Sears MA may even help close the product sale because it truly differentiates Sears as the company that provides the best protection and service available. A Sears MA is truly one of the best ways we can all provide outrageous customer service, which really makes Sears a more compelling place to shop. Just listen to how happy our MA customers are who were recently surveyed. Excellent maintenance repair program. We have enjoyed our maintenance agreement. There's no question who to call when in trouble. I have my VCR serviced and cleaned every year. Great service. My refrigerator and microwave were recently serviced under a maintenance agreement. And your repairman was thorough, efficient, cheerful, and very helpful. Good work. I expect good things from Sears service and get them. All our customers can experience the same high level of satisfaction when they take advantage of the power of a Sears MA. If you present the value of the maintenance agreement ethically and professionally to 100% of your customers purchasing a product that qualifies for maintenance agreement coverage, more than likely you'll be successful at selling them to your customers which ultimately means more customers who continue doing business with you and Sears. In the next section, you'll discover how to prepare for the sale and how to greet your customers. Until then, stop the tape here and turn to your action guide. Selling Sears maintenance agreements right 100% of the time with 100% of your ability using 100% of the process begins long before you get on the sales floor. It begins when you're totally prepared to sell. That means making sure you and your sales floor are ready to do business. Do you have all your necessary selling tools as well as the Sears maintenance agreement tear sheets? It is your responsibility to make sure you have enough tear sheets and holders. Make sure you know where your tear sheets should be and how many sheets should be there based on your plan to sell. Move the tear sheets around based on the plan to sell so they are conveniently located next to the best selling items. Have you practiced your presentation until you know it by heart? Are you prepared to show a genuine interest in your customer? Are you dressed the part? Would you want to do business with someone like you? Will you be able to provide believability by giving a professional presentation? Are you ready to listen to your customers, both verbally and visually? Have you set SMART goals? That is goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, and time-oriented? And do you have the right attitude? Because the number one ingredient in your success is your attitude. If you were going to sum up your attitude in a word or two, what would yours be? Do you have a negative mental attitude or a positive mental attitude? Recognize that your mental attitude is the one and only thing that you and you alone have complete control over. Understand that no one can hurt your feelings, make you angry or scared without your permission. So don't give them permission. Because you have complete control over your mental attitude, so take charge of directing your mind with a positive mental attitude. Concentrate your mind on the can-do portion of your job and don't dwell on the can't-do portion. In time, it also will become a can-do. Just remember, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, either way, you're right. So wouldn't you rather think you can? Can you see just how important it is to have a positive mental attitude to your success and ultimately to the success of your store? If you're totally prepared to give the presentation of your life with a can-do attitude, you're ready to greet your customers. 
The greeting is your first contact with your customer, so it sets the tone for the entire sale. To ensure that you maximize every opportunity to sell, you must make each customer glad they decided to come into your store. If you don't acknowledge your customers immediately, most likely you'll lose the opportunity to help them all together. If you're with a customer or on a business-related phone call, acknowledge the customer who has just entered your department and tell them you'll be with them as soon as possible. All tasks should be secondary. Remember, the customer comes first because you won't get a second chance to make a first impression, so make it count. Try putting your customer at ease by using a social greeting like, mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Gary, and you are? Uh, John and Mary Worth. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. and Mrs. Worth, and what brings you here today? Or try using a merchandise-related greeting like, Hi, I'm Hi. Joan. Which model are you looking for? Hi, I'm Gary. You're looking at our best model. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm Joan. Hi, Joan. We've got some great unadvertised specials today. This is one of my favorite greetings because the customer will probably take the lead and ask you what or where they are, and then the ice is broken. During the greeting, it's essential to make eye contact. Use the customer's name. It makes the relationship personal. Another great reason to get and use the customer's name is if you can't close the sale, you'll be much more likely to get the lead information if you're on a name basis with a customer. Remember to recognize repeat customers. Smile and get your customers to smile. Pick the greeting that works best for you. Ultimately, you want to get your customer talking. Discover why they are there and then guide them to the product that best fits their needs. This is the point of the sale where you begin relating to your customer. Remember, the way you greet your customer sets the tone for the entire sale. The very first thing you have to sell your customer is yourself. Once you sell yourself to your customer and get their trust and confidence without abusing it, that relationship you formed lays the foundation for a successful sale. The way you approach your customer sets the stage for discovering exactly what he wants and needs. Because if you were to greet a customer by asking, May I help you? Most likely, the customer's response would be, nah, No thanks, I'm just looking. And you'd never get to discover what your customer wants and needs. Now what happens if you've greeted the customer properly and they still say, I'm just looking. When a customer says, just looking, what that customer is telling you is to take it easy. I'm not comfortable. So what that means is we have to put on our soft shoes and proceed very softly with that customer until they become comfortable. Try saying, well, go ahead and look around. By the way, we have some great unadvertised specials today. What do you think the customer is going to say? Most likely, you'll have a customer asking you for help. Greeting your customers properly opens the door to discovering exactly what they really want and need, so you can assist them in making the right buying decision. And discovering what your customers want and need is the next step of the sale, which you'll be learning about in the next part of the program. Stop the tape here and turn to your action guide. In this part of the sale, you need to discover the answers to some probing questions that will help you build your sales presentation. Before we get into what it takes to discover what your customers want and need, it's appropriate to spend a moment talking about bait and switch, also known as M13, which basically states that when a customer responds to an advertisement, you must take the customer directly to the advertised item, describe its features and benefits in a positive manner, and then make a firm offer to sell. If a customer says yes to your offer to sell, reassure the customer of the value of that item. Then you can offer to show that customer what's available in that line of merchandise just so they can make sure that they've made the best decision for themselves. If a customer is not responding to an advertised item, there are really two very simple ways to discover what your customers really want and need. First, ask merchandise-related questions and then listen very carefully. 
Discovery is the key to professional selling. That's why it's important not to rush through this step, because you can avoid numerous objections later if you do this step well up front. There are two primary goals you need to achieve during discovery. First, find out the customer's needs by asking open-ended questions. Second, bond with your customer by showing them that you really care. This will help you develop customers for life. Want a quick tip about which open-ended questions to ask when qualifying? There's a very easy technique to remember, and I like to call it the five W's and one H of qualifying. The W stand for who, what, when, where, why, and the H for how. The real beauty of this technique is that you don't have to start with any particular question, just the one that fits naturally. Let's look at some of the qualifying questions you can ask that relate to Sears maintenance agreements. Who will be using this? How big is your laundry room? Who else will be using this? What types of fabrics do you wash most often? How is the old one working? What other features are important to you? What size is your patio? How often will you be using it? Do you have a Sears card? When would you like it delivered? Who will be tuning it up? Who will be servicing it? Continue asking your customers probing questions to discover exactly what they want and need, and you can't go wrong. Just think how much more satisfied your customers will be if they get exactly what they want and need. Put yourself in your customer's shoes. Isn't that what you would want as a customer? Once you're armed with the answers to the five W's and one H, you're ready to move on to the next stage of the selling process presenting the merchandise and the Sears maintenance agreement during the product sale. Stop the tape here and turn to your action guide. Once you've discovered exactly what the customer wants and needs, you should then use this information to tailor your presentation to fit their particular needs. And that simply means advocating or recommending the product, including the Sears maintenance agreement, for the maximum amount of years that best fits their needs. This is the process of going through the features and benefits that are important to your customers. It is also the part of the process where the customer is saying yes to your questions. For example, if you ask for permission and show the customer an item which has the features and benefits that they said were most important to them, what can they say but yes? Sometimes, however, in discovery, you'll find out that your customers really don't know exactly what they are looking for or what's available in that line of merchandise. Your best option in either case might be to show your customer the top-of-the-line merchandise first. But if you are going to do that, you need to ask their permission. Try asking for it like this. If it's okay with the both of you, I'd like to take just a couple minutes and show you what's available in a washer and dryer today. Then you can decide what features you'd like to have on your new washer and dryer. And from there, I can take you right to the washer and dryer that has exactly what you want. If we do that, I think I can save you some time. <laughs> I'd like that. This shows the customer the newest technology without giving the wrong message that you didn't listen to them during discovery. Before going any further, it's important to stress that the Sears Maintenance Agreement presentation needs to be integrated into the product presentation. Don't wait to the very end of the sale to present the Sears Maintenance Agreement. You don't want to surprise your customer with it at the cash register because by then, they've already gotten a certain dollar amount in their mind, so most likely, it'll be too late. You don't want to buy a maintenance agreement on your wash and dryer, do you? Nah, that's okay. See what I mean? Now, one of the most detrimental sales mistakes you can make is prejudging your customers. I can't stress enough the importance of letting your customers make the buying decision for themselves. What you think is right for your customer may be perfect for you and totally wrong for your customer. That's why it's essential to give all your customers the opportunity to decide for themselves. Have you ever bought something only to be disappointed when you discovered that there was a product or service that better fits your needs? As salespeople, we sometimes fall into the trap of prejudging our customers. It is your responsibility 
to offer your customers the products and services we sell at Sears. The moment you start prejudging your customer and basing their decision on what you would do is the moment you won't see those customers again. It is essential to give your customers the opportunity to buy the maintenance agreement because if you didn't and something happened to their product, who do you think they will be upset with because they aren't covered? It's also imperative to learn all the features of what you're selling and know how to translate them into benefits. Every feature must have a benefit. It's important to understand the difference between features and benefits. A feature is a fact about the merchandise or a description of a part of the product. For example, the Sears maintenance agreement covers parts, labor, and trip charges due to normal use. And once a year, at your request, Sears will perform an annual preventive maintenance check. Are all features. While a benefit answers the customer's question, what's in it for me? It's the satisfaction the customer will receive from the feature such as, which will help protect you from unexpected repair cost, help keep your product in proper operating condition, and give you peace of mind. You can see the difference. Features tell, benefits sell. Now what features and benefits should you cover first? First, cover the feature and benefit which the customer said was the most important to them in discovery. This has the largest capacity available, and I know you mentioned how important that is since you're going to be washing a lot of cloth diapers. Absolutely. There's no way we're going to be washing any by hand. <laughs> Second, point out to the customer that the product qualifies for a maintenance agreement plan or comment on national service. Do not try to sell the maintenance agreement here because you haven't sold anything yet. However, this is the perfect opportunity to plant the seed for the maintenance agreement. Most top salespeople usually plant the maintenance agreement seed at the very beginning of the presentation part of the product sale. I know service is important to you. Well, that's why we're buying it from Sears. Because we know we can trust Sears when we need it fixed. Well, Sears Home Central has the largest service organization in the country. As a matter of fact, we are three times bigger than our next three competitors combined. A really great way to plant the maintenance agreement seed. I can't stress enough that what you learn during discovery is what you will use to build your presentation. Without it, you definitely won't close as many sales as you could. Once the MA seed has been planted, continue to discuss the next feature and benefit of the product that the customer said is important to them. Then discuss the third feature and benefit that is important to the customer. When you see body language or verbal approval that the customer is saying they are ready to buy, then go to the maintenance agreement. Begin by covering the manufacturer's warranty with the customer. This is the easiest way to switch from selling the merchandise to selling the maintenance agreement. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Worth, both your washer and dryer have a one-year limited parts and labor warranty and qualify for a Sears maintenance agreement, which is on sale today. Think about it. You just used two very key power words. Qualifies and that's on sale. What a perfect way to begin presenting the maintenance agreement to your customers. Want a great tip on how to make your maintenance agreement presentation as easy as possible? Well, if I were to walk up to you and extend my hand to shake your hand, more than likely you'd shake it. Most people don't refuse to shake your hand, right? Well, the same's true if you extend a tear sheet to your customers. More than likely, they will take it. And remember, many customers like to learn about the maintenance agreement by reading about them. When using the tear sheet, begin by explaining how a Sears maintenance agreement offers more than what our competitors offer, an extended warranty. Always start by presenting the maintenance agreement for the maximum amount of years. And if that doesn't satisfy your customer's needs, then continue trading them down. What I'm offering you is Sears maintenance agreement coverage on your washer and dryer. You know, we're really not interested in an extended warranty. No. When customers raise this concern to the maintenance agreement, they're really confusing a Sears maintenance agreement with what most other retailers offer, an extended warranty. They're just not one and the same. In this case, they're saying they really don't understand the benefits of the maintenance agreement compared to an extended warranty. No one's really explained the difference to them. It's a clear case of not understanding the facts. You're absolutely right. 
And that's one of the reasons why we don't sell extended warranties. Then what's this? An extended warranty with a fancier name. <laughs> really, they're not one and the same. Yeah, right. Then prove it. Here, let me show you why Sears Maintenance Agreement coverage is so much better. Many extended warranties only extend the terms of the manufacturer's warranty for a specified period of time. When presenting the maintenance agreement, underscore the warranty's limitations to show the customer just how much the maintenance agreement covers. For example, the warranty on this washer and dryer is a very good one. However, it's a one-year limited parts and labor warranty. That's why a Sears maintenance agreement is so great, because it not only picks up where the warranty leaves off, it offers coverage such as Parts and labor not already covered by the limited warranty needed to help keep your washer and dryer operating properly under normal use. Cosmetic parts for up to three years. Continued service beyond the normal warranty performed by Sears authorized service technicians, which means peace of mind. Repairs done by Sears authorized service technicians, which means someone you can trust will be working on your product. There's no deductible. The maintenance agreement covers non-technical calls, such as customer instructions. Nationwide service, which means Sears can provide service in virtually any city in the U.S. Now, what happens if the warranty doesn't cover the problem? Will this maintenance service cover it? As long as it's due to normal use, if it's not covered under the manufacturer's warranty, Sears will take care of it. Plus, you have unlimited service calls. Also, with maintenance agreement coverage, you're covered. So you won't have to worry about unexpected repair bills due to normal use. So you're telling us that if something were to happen to our washer... Including the dryer. They'd be covered. Absolutely. Okay. Where's the fine print? <laughs> we have nothing to hide at Sears. There are some exclusions listed in the maintenance agreement, such as expendable items, service required as a result of any alterations, repairs made by someone other than Sears, and any products used for commercial use, to name a few. And if anything were to happen to either your washer or dryer while you were covered, all you'd have to do is call Sears Home Central at 1-800-4-MY-HOME. And if necessary, a Sears authorized service technician will come out to your home and take care of it for you. Once you've gone through all the things an MA covers, then tell your customers the features and explain the benefits of the PM check in a way you really believe. Remember, the PM check is probably the most important advantage that we have over the competition. It helps make our MA that much more tangible to our customers. Plus, we don't have to sell breakdown like our competitors. We can sell preventive maintenance. How many of our competitors can say what they offer may help extend the life of their products and help keep their products in proper operating condition? We can help eliminate some problems before they even become problems. It's one of our biggest selling advantages. And the biggest advantage is that when your washer and dryer are covered under a Sears maintenance agreement, you'll receive a preventive maintenance check at your request for each year of coverage to help keep them in proper operating condition. Oh, uh, what kind of check? Here, let me show you. While performing the preventive maintenance check on your washer, the technician will check the fill cycle for the proper temperature and level to assure correct conditions exist for washing synthetic and natural fabrics properly. Verify that the pump out and spin cycles are correct to ensure that your clothes are being rinsed properly and spun out completely. Check the level of the machine and test while in the spin cycle for excessive noise and vibration. Check the timer for correct operation. Inspect the electrical system for proper ground and secure all the connections. Proper grounding of your washing machine is necessary for your safety and for correct operation of the electronic components. Mm -hmm. Check the tub and hoses for leaks. Small, unnoticed leaks could result in floor damage. Verify that your drain pipe or laundry tub is capable of handling the high level of water discharged. Slow drains could cause water damage to the floor. Mm. And the technician will operate the washer through a brief cycle to check the functions of the machine components and make sure it's working properly. And those are just the checks on our washer? Yes. How about the dryer? While performing the preventive maintenance check on your dryer, the technician will inspect the electrical system for proper ground and secure all the connections. Proper grounding of your electric dryer is necessary for your safety and for correct operation of the electrical components. Mm -hmm. Check the rear drum seal. A worn seal could cause lint to accumulate inside the cabinet, which could result in incorrect heat temperatures. Check the drum belt, idler pulley, and support rollers for wear. Worn parts could cause the machine to quit operating. 
check the operation of the thermostat. Incorrect temperatures could result in clothing damage or poor operation. Check the exhaust system for leaks or restrictions. Leaks could allow exhaust to enter the home. Restrictions could increase drying time or even prevent the heat cycle from operating. Check the timer for correct cycle operations. Check to make sure the dryer is level. An unlevel dryer could make a lot of noise. <laughs> and the technician will operate the dryer through a brief cycle to make sure it's operating the way it was designed to. But suppose he finds something wrong as he's checking them out. Will that be covered too? Yes, if it's due to normal use. Because when you have maintenance agreement coverage on your washer and dryer, if a problem is detected during a preventive maintenance check, it will be repaired at no cost to you. It really helps prevent minor problems from becoming major breakdowns. I'm really surprised it covers all that. Yeah, it's got to be expensive. To cover your washer and dryer for three years of service will only be this much, which is only this much a week for peace of mind. And by covering it today, you'll save this amount, which includes both a multi-item and multi-year discount. It really is the maximum amount of coverage for the best possible value. May I put this on your Sears card, or may I open a Sears Charge Plus account? Once you've presented as many solutions as necessary, by telling the features and explaining their benefits, then let the customer react. Be assured, customers will raise concerns. How you answer them really determines whether you'll be successful at closing the maintenance agreement sale. In the next part of the video, you'll learn some very easy steps to overcoming your customers' objections by answering their concerns. Stop the tape here and turn to your action guide. You will get objections. It's a way of life as a salesperson. What's an objection anyway? It's really the customer's way of making an excuse to get out of making a decision because they don't fully understand the benefits of the maintenance agreement. An objection is a very negative way of asking a question. Think about it as a customer asking you for more information, more benefits of the maintenance agreement. And that objection or excuse will either be in the form of a clear objection or an unclear objection. A clear objection is one that states in plain language what the customer doesn't like. It's really a need stated in a negative term, like, it costs too much. While an unclear objection is just that, hazy, unclear answers like, I need to think about it. You'll learn that in order to overcome an unclear objection, you'll need to turn it into a clear objection by probing. More on that later. Try answering your customer's concerns by using the following techniques. When the customer raises an objection, listen very carefully to what your customers are saying. There's a really great saying that sums it up. We've got two ears and one mouth, which means we're supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. Clarify your customers' concerns by restating their words back to them to make sure you really do understand it. Then verify it by asking a closed-end yes or no question. This step shows that you're really listening. Cushion your customer's concern by sharing your understanding and agreeing with them. It's important to empathize with a customer. They can tell if you really care. Answer your customer's concerns by making a benefit statement based on their needs. A key factor in any sales situation is your willingness to continue to discuss the benefits even after your customers have objected. Once you've presented as many solutions as necessary to answer your customers' concerns by telling the features and explaining their benefits, then seek your customers' agreement. If they react positively, then go for the close by asking for the sale. If you don't ask, you'll never get it. More on that in the next part of the video. Let's see how to use this technique to overcome some of the most common objections by answering the customer's concerns. It all sounds really good, but you know what? We really need to think about it. So is this a clear objection or an unclear objection? Here's a hint. The customers aren't saying what's on their mind, are they? There's more to it than meets the eye. And when it's an unclear objection like this, you really need to listen even harder to try to read between the lines. 
You also need to continue asking probing questions until you discover the real reason why your customers are objecting, ultimately turning this unclear objection into a clear one. When I'm faced with a decision like this, I need some time to think about it too, so I can really understand how you feel. Yeah, why rush into it? Was there something I didn't explain? No. I think you did a really good job. I know you like all this coverage, especially the preventive maintenance checks. It's all great. Since you like all this coverage, then what is it you're not sure about? Is it the price? Well, yeah, it, it just seems like a lot of money. More times than not, a uh, let me think about it unclear objection is really a smokescreen for a price objection. And if you don't continue to clarify the real reason why your customers don't want the maintenance agreement, they'll probably continue thinking about it and you'll never get the sale. Price is probably the most common objection you'll hear. In this case, the customers need to know how the maintenance agreement can help them save money in the long run, not cost more. If I'm hearing you correctly, the reason you don't want to purchase the maintenance agreement is that you believe it costs too much. Absolutely. We have to watch every cent we spend. Especially just after having a baby. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why a Sears maintenance agreement is so great. Because it not only helps protect you from unexpected repair costs due to normal use, it also helps keep your washer and dryer in proper working condition. Even though that may be, it's just so hard to justify it. Well, here, this will help. Let's say you didn't buy the maintenance agreement on your washer and dryer, but decided to have a preventive maintenance check performed each year for three years to help ensure that they were in proper operating condition. Mm, I don't know. You pay this amount. And then, let's say something like your motor burned out after the manufacturer's warranty was up. That could cost as much as this, including parts and labor. That's exactly what happened to ours. Plus, don't forget the timer gave out in the dryer. Oh, yeah, and the pump in the washer. Well, the total for three years of preventive maintenance checks plus the motor for your washer would be this amount. And that's if nothing else happened to your washer or dryer during those three years. So, by comparing that to three years of maintenance agreement coverage, which would only be this amount, you can see what a great value the Sears maintenance agreement really is. Well, that might be so, but since the warranty doesn't expire for a year, we've got some time to think about it. As I explained earlier, the warranty is a one-year limited parts and labor warranty. A Sears maintenance agreement picks up where this warranty leaves off and offers more coverage. If you waited until the warranty expires, you wouldn't get the discounted price I'm offering you today. And it would still expire on exactly the same date the three-year maintenance agreement would. Just think of the peace of mind knowing that if something happened to either your washer or dryer, due to normal use, all you'd have to do is make one phone call, and we'd handle it. But suppose service isn't needed. You feel, why buy the maintenance agreement if it's not going to do anything, right? Exactly. I agree. Especially if you never needed repairs. However, most of our products, even under normal use, may require minor adjustments from time to time to keep them operating efficiently. Even your car needs service periodically. Yeah, that's true. You already know how expensive service can be. We sure do. Well, when you're covered under a Sears maintenance agreement, think of the peace of mind you'll have knowing that the responsibility for covered problems is on us. Plus, you'll get a preventive maintenance check on both your washer and dryer at your request for each year of the coverage. And I know that's something you really like, right? Yeah, that's true. And if your customers raise more concerns, continue to listen, clarify, cushion, answer, and seek agreement. And if the customers react positively, then go for the close by asking for the sale. That's what the next part of this program is all about. Stop the tape here and turn to your action guide. If you don't ask for the sale, you'll never get it. And this is probably the number one reason why most salespeople don't get the sale, because they never ask for it. Closing is a lot simpler than many people think. It's really a matter of convincing yourself. And usually the biggest roadblock to closing is simply not asking closing questions, mostly because of the fear of being turned down. More than likely, the customer is in the store to purchase something. You're not going to close every time, but that certainly doesn't mean you're a failure. Just read about some of the most successful people in life, and you'll discover that they failed many more times than they were successful. However, they never gave up. 
Remember, the minute that you give up is the moment before you succeed. Many top salespeople say the main ingredients to success include having a positive mental attitude, being persistent, and knowing all about what they're selling. Learning when to close by recognizing customer signals can really help increase your success stories. And these signals are very easy to recognize, such as when your customer shows interest in the maintenance agreement. This really covers all that? Now all I have to do is call that 1-800 number and you'll take care of it for me. Another good one is when you hear a customer's verbal buying signals. I really like that. That's great. Or when you see a customer's non-verbal buying signals. You really need to learn a variety of closes to be successful because what works with one customer won't necessarily work with another. Let's look at some closes that really work. You should already be aware of the most popular of all closes, the credit close, in which you use the Sears card or Sears Charge Plus to close the sale. May I put this on your Sears card? When your customers use their Sears card, you're helping create a customer for life by tying them to Sears. And Sears card holders are our most satisfied shoppers and even shop more often at Sears. Just think, when our customers use Sears credit instead of a bank card, Sears saves third-party expenses. Wouldn't you rather keep that money in-house? Okay, how about the assume the sale close, which really describes what it means, basically presuming that your customers have purchased. The price includes your tractor and the maintenance agreement. Now you can see that the maintenance agreement only adds this much per month. May I put this on your Sears card, or would you like to open a Sears Charge Plus account? Another great close is the summation close, in which you simply sum up the benefits of what you're selling. You acknowledge that you really like everything this agreement covers, plus the Sears Home Central Exclusive 1-800 number. It's great. Well, then why don't you let me go ahead and write this up for you? How about the direct close, in which you directly ask the customer to buy? Since you really like this maintenance agreement, mm -hmm. then let me write it up for you. There are so many more great ways to close. Use the one that's most comfortable for you. Now, what happens if your customer says, Look, I really don't want that agreement on there. Now, what did that customer just tell you about the product? That's right, he just bought it. By saying, no, I don't want to buy the maintenance agreement, he just told you he's buying the merchandise. Now that's what's called a secondary close, one of the strongest forms of closing I know. When using a secondary close, your goal is to get your customer focused on the biggest advantage we have over the competition, Sears service. And by doing this, you'll take the customer's focus away from the merchandise and give them something else to think about, something else to make the buying decision on. And no matter what the answer is, it should tell you that they've bought the merchandise. If you're going to get a no, get a no on the maintenance agreement and still sell the merchandise. There are many, many reasons why a customer says no. But you must respect their right to say no. Don't ever pressure them into taking something they don't want. And if they say no, just remember, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the Sears maintenance agreement. So don't take it personally. Now, I know it's easier said than done. However, it's important to remember that even though a customer doesn't buy the Sears maintenance agreement, they are still a loyal Sears customer, and we want to keep them shopping at your store. Can you see that selling Sears maintenance agreements really is a win-win-win situation for everyone involved? Our customers win because they get that added peace of mind, knowing that they won't be faced with unexpected repair bills due to normal use. You win because you've created a very special bond between the customer and you, which probably means more sales for you. And because of this special bond, Sears wins, because those same customers will continue shopping at your store time after time. A win-win-win situation that helps create customers for life. Stop the video here and turn to your action guide.